All right, so let's get started. Anyone cooking with me that recently joined, and I'm starting with the first recipe called chopped salad pasta. Anyone out there making it? Okay, I will move on. So you notice that the recipe is called chopped salad pasta, not chopped pasta salad or pasta chopped salad. Even though I am, oops, someone's on mute. If you can, or unmuted, if you can mute yourself or Catherine, you can see at the top where someone's microphone is uh, moving, you can just hit mute. Great, thank you. Um, even though my recipes are featuring pasta, I want the vegetables to be the star of the show, right? We're always talking about plant forward diets, but I think pasta makes everything great. So a lot of vegetables going on, but that's why all three, perfect. Okay, great. So Deborah, I'm starting with the chopped salad pasta. All right, so the first step is to make the dressing and we're gonna let it sit a little bit. So in this bowl right here, I have some diced red onion. You can use whatever type of onion you'd like, whatever's on hand. I am not the person that runs out to get a red onion if I have a white onion. So I have it diced in here and I'm going to add my red wine vinegar. Next, I will add some fresh squeezed lemon. I use a juicer, my little juicer, but what I'm doing now, obviously I'm juicing my lemon, if this is too much for your hand, sometimes we're having trouble with um, bone or joint pain or some neuropathy, this might be too much. So bottled lemon juice is completely fine, completely fine. So I will add this to the red wine vinegar and the onion, give it a little whisk, and I will set that aside and we'll come back to it. So hopefully uh, all the the flavors will marry together. Obviously, if you do this the day before, that's even that's even better. Okay, so I want to show you the pasta that I will be using. So this is actually a yellow lentil pasta, and it cooks up rather nice. A lot of times we think I cannot cook pasta ahead of time, it's going to stick together. Well, I did. I cooked it before class, I ran ice cold water over it and I drained it and I added some olive oil and just give it a zhuzh every once in a while and it's completely fine. So why did I use yellow lentil pasta? I will share that with you. So uh, if you're in the area, I got this at, at Wegmans, so it's Wegmans brand. And it's good if there are any gluten intolerances out there, but um, it's also good because there's a lot of protein. So for a half a cup, which is four ounces, there's 14 grams of protein. So that's one reason to try an alternative pasta. We are upping the protein, okay? If you were to do a regular pasta, that would be half or a quarter of that. And there is, um, there's three grams of fiber. So always a good source of fiber as well. Sometimes you'll see so this is yellow lentil flour. Sometimes you'll see that they'll add some pea protein into it. They'll mix the different lentil powders together, but all in all, you're getting more protein, which we always want to get into our diet. So what I'm going to add to this are some chickpeas or garbanzo beans, whatever you'd like to call it. I'm just going to step out and toss this in with the pasta that I just showed you. I used canned beans. You can buy the bagged beans, great price and soak them if you'd like. I like to just get the uh, canned, give them a good rinse to get some of that sodium off and, and I'm good to go. All right, let's talk about this radicchio here. Everything that I'm picking up now, I'm going to add to the bowl. So if you've never had radicchio, it looks like small head of, of red cabbage, but it's not, it's a chicory. So it is part of the, it's a cousin of the lettuce family, dandelion. The leaves are a little bitter. So if you submerge chopped radicchio leaves in water, it pulls out some of that bitterness. 
So I just sliced it in half. There's a little core right there. So I'm just going to wedge it out and I'll give it a rough chop. Now, full disclosure, Radicchio is a little pricey. This head of Radicchio, which is about the size of a softball, was over $4, okay? So if that's not something that you want to spend that much money on, you can use arugula. Any type of bitter green would be just fine, would be just fine. This is all about working with what, what you can. I'm going to throw that right in the bowl as well. So I don't buy radicchio often for that very reason, but it gives a really nice color, especially to green, to green salads. And it's the, the beautiful color, again, I was talking about those anthocyanins. This is an example of something with uh, a lot of anthocyanins, so a lot of healthy antioxidants. And it lasts really long. It will last um, over a week. I've had it over a week in my refrigerator and it stayed fresh. Okay, there we go. Next, I will be adding some pepperoncini. Okay, so this is a mild pepper. There are several different names. It's usually uh, pickled in a jar. They're nice and tangy a little bit of a bite, but really not too much. It's not something that's going to give a lot of heat. To me, it's more of a tanginess. They're pretty much chopped already. I'm just going to give them another, another rough chop. To me, they taste a lot like banana peppers, if you've ever had those. So these are great for a salad or to put on top of, of a sandwich or just eat out of the jar, which I've been known to do when I'm hungry, standing in front of the refrigerator. Okay, next I will add some basil. The recipe calls for parsley. I went out, my husband does garden and all the parsley was dead. <laughs> so I pulled some basil instead, which is fine. Um, again, you work with what you have. If you don't have fresh herbs, you can use dried herbs. So if you were using a tablespoon of fresh herbs, you would do a teaspoon of its dried uh, version. What type of pepper? Pepperoncini. Let's see, let me show you that. So you'll find it usually where all of the olives are, um, the roasted peppers. That's where I, I usually find it. So yeah, good question, I'm glad you asked that. Sometimes I assume everyone knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so fresh basil, again, one tablespoon. If you're doing dry, this is more than a tablespoon, but I'm just saying in general, if you're doing dry, you go down to a teaspoon. Or if you're not a fan, you don't have parsley, you're using, you don't like basil, then you can leave it out. It's still a beautiful salad, okay. Here I have some Fontina cheese. It is a soft cheese. If you want to keep this plant-based, you do not have to put the cheese in, okay? So I'll dump that in. I'm going to remove some of this right here. This recipe clearly makes a lot. <laughs> so. Use a big bowl if you do not want to make this much, then cut the recipe in half. So it's a good thing that my husband and I enjoy. enjoy. That's my word, it's a stage on one of them Grand Theft photos where you be in tiny little towers banging it out. Does anyone, does that someone with a question? Okay, just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. This is great if you are entertaining or if you need to bring a dish somewhere because it makes a lot. All right, so let's finish up the dressing. Remember I had my uh, vinegar, red onions and lemon juice over here. So I will add olive oil. If you had um, avocado oil, that would work. Some honey.
you don't want to add the honey, that's fine too. Still a lot of flavors going on in this salad. Some stone ground mustard. You could also use uh, Dijon mustard if you don't like the seeds. And thyme, not and, because I'll be adding more. So thyme is a wonderful little herb. We see it mostly dried and just tiny little leaves. It's a heartier herb. So you would use it in a nice hearty salad like this. You could use it on poultry. Um, it might be a little too much for fish unless you're doing one of the, the fattier fishes. Let's see. Here we go. That's what I wanted to demonstrate. So you have this little mini twig right there. So all you do is you run your finger down and just pull. It's usually easier with your fingernails than your, your finger. Um, and that's how you get the, get the leaves off. That smells delicious. So it's time for, someone actually called it a dad joke on mom, but one time, and this is a true story, I was looking for time and I was in the produce department and I couldn't find time. So I went up to um, the person who was working in produce and I said, I'm looking for time. And what do you think she said? I'm out of time. So it is a, a, I'll call it a mom joke, but it is kind of funny. All right, and that's it. That is it. You could, like I said before about the arugula, you can add arugula anyway to give it more uh, green color. Back, going back to the parsley, you could use curly leaf parsley, flat leaf parsley, Flat leaf parsley tends to have a little more um, umph to it than the curly leaf parsley, but either one would work. All right. That looks beautiful, Michelle. I love the colors. I know, right? It's so tasty. So yeah, yeah. And there you go. That is our chopped salad pasta. Delicious. And a lot of this you can prep the day before, which is always good if you are entertaining. All right, so whoever was cooking along, oh, I forget who was cooking along. Are you okay? How did that work out for you? We have Debbie and Deborah cooking with us. Yeah, right. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't cook the pasta ahead of time. <laughs> so we're doing that now. Yeah, but I prepped everything. I'm not a fan of radicchio, but I like dandelion greens. I eat them every day, so I use that. So mine's not as pretty okay. as yours. But Perfect. And that worked out really well because radicchio is a cousin of dandelion. Right. So, right. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, hey, hey, um, hey, hey, Michelle, this is Tracy. Quick question. Um, if, you, if a person doesn't like chickpeas or garbanzo beans, can you use black beans instead? Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up because oh, I do perfect. that. If you're not, you can use any type of beans, white beans, navy beans, black, kidneys, lima beans, uh, lentils. I think lentils would even work in this, especially because I'm using the lentil pasta. So I will say also that um, red lentil pasta, that tends to cook down a little bit more. So, or it breaks down is what I'm trying to say. It breaks down a little bit more. So if you were to add lentils, maybe do like a, a brown or green lentil that, that would hold up a little bit better. Um, so yeah, uh, all right. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to move on to the next recipe, which is my lighter pasta primavera. So pasta primavera, um, you can make it with a lot of, heavy sauces, so a cream sauce. So this one is not using a cream sauce, but instead we're using a little bit of butter, okay? Six tablespoons to, or excuse me, four tablespoons to be exact, but you're not eating the whole thing in one sitting. If you don't want to use butter, you can use olive oil, but the butter gives it that little bit of creaminess that you normally find in a, in a pasta primavera. And 
my dog just joined us. Okay, so I am carefully going to bring these ingredients over. So a lot of vegetables going on in this recipe. This is like a clean out your refrigerator type recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is work with the carrots. So there is, I'm going to cut these into matchsticks. And I know there's a popular French word. So if you're a French major and you want to uh, take yourself off mute and shout out how to say it, but I believe it's Julien or Yeah. So I just Julian. say, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I just call them matchsticks. So oh, I will yeah. demonstrate how to do that. I cut most of them before class because I would be here all night. If you don't want to do this, you can simply use a vegetable peeler and just peel the carrot and you get those nice shaved curly cues in your salad. So what I'm going to do is make this into a rectangle. So I just take it carefully, slice it, turn it, slice it, turn it, slice it, turn it, and slice it. So there we have our our nice rectangle. Don't throw away your scraps, they make a good snack. That's probably why the dog headed over here and just cut it into little planks as thin or as thick as you'd like. And then you stack them, make little strips. So that is how you do that. Not too bad, not too bad. And we have videos on our Her Library in the nutrition section. They're called Back to Basic Videos. And we do short little two minute videos on how to cut different things or how to roast or saute. And uh, for one of those, I did do carrots. So if you wanna go back and, and check that out. If you are doing the sliver, um, using the vegetable peeler, you want to add that last to your pan. You don't want to add it right away because it's so thin and it'll cook down uh, fairly quickly. Heat up some, some olive oil and I'm going to start throwing my vegetables in. All right, so we have the carrots going. Next, I will be using uh, aspar asparagus. I like to be fancy and cut these at a diagonal because I think I'm fancy. But the important thing is to not cut through the little stem up here because you know if you cut through it or the top, not the stem, but the top, then it breaks apart and you don't want that. You want to have that pretty little top. So I slice them off, I throw them in, and then I take the rest and just chop them at a diagonal. Toss Michelle, them what was, was the recipe, um, is it available somewhere? Yes, you know what? Um, I think I forgot to email those to you. Okay. I forgot to email those to you. So everyone gets them after class, but I typically um, send them to the moderator to post them. So I apologize I didn't do that because it's good to, to follow along. I don't know, Catherine. I don't think I've uploaded them to Teams. So yes, yeah, my fault. Sorry about that. And then okay. we also had someone asking, what's your cooking assistant name? I'm sorry, say that again. Your cooking assistant's name, I guess, when you um, when your dog was around. That's Bella. That's our little Bella Boo. She's, um, these are snow peas. She's been going through a tough time. We just adopted uh, two cats and she's been really sad. <laughs> so try to give her extra special love and attention, but just the look on her face makes me sad. So yeah, she's a sweetheart. Okay, 
So I have the asparagus, carrots, and snow peas. If you are not crazy about any of those vegetables, leave it out. Maybe this is, again, another recipe, clean out your refrigerator, broccoli, cauliflower, bell peppers, whatever you like, you can put in the saute pan. The point of this recipe is to not overcook your vegetables or have them completely soft. You don't want the mat sticks to be like this. You still, you want them softened a little bit, but still crisp to the bite. So that's what we are going for. We're going for a fresh, fresh tasting vegetable. So I have my uh, saute pan on medium. And again, this recipe makes a lot also, and it's a one pot meal. The pasta will go right into this. And if, again, if you don't want to make this recipe, then you can uh, cut it in half. So let's talk about the pasta that I used for this. So this is a uh, bow tie pasta or farfal or fale. And again, I cooked it between, uh, before class, ran it under cold water and broccoli, zucchini and trick. That's really nice. That's great. Um, this, uh, so I ran it under ice water, olive oil, given it, been given it a little judge here and there and it's fine. So this actually is pasta. Not that they are not pastas, but so this is a, a wheat pasta, and but there's added protein. So if you're familiar with Barilla, usually it's a blue box, and but if you see the yellow box, it's called Protein Plus. So what they've done to this is they've added lentil flour, pea protein, chickpea flour, barley flour, spelt flour. So it's a lot going on there. So if you do have a gluten sensitivity, this is not something that, that you'd want to try. But for two ounces, so remember the other one was four ounces at 14 grams of protein. This is two ounces has 10 grams of protein, and then it bumps it up to five grams of fiber. So this is a great choice as well, especially as you're trying to increase your protein. Very good. Good, like one more minute. Any questions so far? How are we doing? My cooks, how are you doing? Evie's giving us thumbs up, Deborah too. So yeah. Good. They're working hard. I see them moving a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. A couple years ago, I think it was when COVID, COVID first um, happened. You know, how else do we say that? Erin, um, our colleague Erin, she, her and I attended a, a cooking demo just like this. We thought, well, let's learn some new skills since we'll now start doing cooking demos like this. And I'm telling you, I think it was a little too much and we were running around our kitchen like chickens without heads it was it was a little a little intense so hopefully i'm not running you ragged like that um so i'm going to step off camera just for a couple seconds i'm going to um remove these vegetables and set them aside and work on some some other stuff so Catherine, i don't know if you did go through everything um already like what's what's coming up actually maybe i can stay i'll stay in the camera that way i don't put you on the spot again no worries so i know that we do have more cooking classes coming up we have we have aubrey's starting in a couple of days, June 24th at nine in the morning, Eastern time. She is- No, 11, 11, 11 a.m. Eastern, oh, yeah. I actually saw 11 and I said nine. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
show. It's um, it's called Bring It to the Barbecue, and um, it says she's going to explore some fun favorites to bring to your next outdoor get together. And the menu includes black bean burgers, herby potato salad, and fruit kebabs with key lime yogurt dip. Wow, that sounds really, really good. Yes, I I uh, moderated one of hers and it, it looked really, really, really good. Um, okay, so I am keeping it on medium. I'll be adding my four tablespoons of butter. Again, you don't have to use the butter, you can use olive oil. But when you think about how much you're eating of it, it's okay. Okay. All right, once that melts, I will be adding my mushrooms, any type of mushrooms. These are just the classic um, baby Bella. You can use um, all of those, any of those exotic mushrooms, white, mush, uh, white button mushrooms. Yes, <laughs> you could use that too. Again, whatever's on sale, whatever you have on hand. And even though these are chopped, you can chop them a little bit more. That's fine. However, you, whatever you like. And I have some fresh garlic here. So just give it a rough chop. If Fresh garlic is not working for you. Leave it out. Add some other herbs and spices. That will work for you. Uh, garlic powder um, would work as well. So always go for the flowers as opposed to um, as opposed to the salt. Also, if you have not seen in the grocery store. There are chews of ginger and garlic paste. So that is a great way if you don't use a lot of garlic, if you don't use a lot of ginger. You might have the ginger in here. So this is what it looks like, ginger paste. It has, there's also garlic and little squeeze tube. It lasts a lot longer. So you can just add it right to your saute pan, maybe squeeze a little bit, not the garlic, well, maybe if you want, but squeeze a little bit of the ginger paste into hot water or have it with your tea with some lemon. Um, I usually find, if I buy ginger root, I usually find it uh, at the bottom of the freezer or back in the back crisper and I end up tossing it. So I like to get the paste for ginger that way I'm not wasting food. So I'm going to let these cook down just a little bit longer. And while I'm waiting for this, I'll talk a little bit about our July, August cooking demos. So Aubrey will take a little break for two months. And we will be bringing Erin back in. Add my garlic. So we just picked out our beans. Our recipes are ready to go. I believe the links will go out next week. So you will see them either in our newsletter um, or emailed to you. But my theme is Strawberry Fields Forever. So each of my recipes will be using strawberries. So strawberry bars, um, strawberry oatmeal waffles, a strawberry goat cheese salad with strawberry vinaigrette. Absolutely delicious. The strawberry bars are so good. So good. I was really happy with the way they turned out. It has that nice tart flavor that I love. Erin's theme will be street, or not street corn. Uh, summer corn, but I think she's doing a street corn. I'm not completely sure, but each recipe will feature summer corn. Perfect for July and August. So be sure to look out for those links. If you don't see them, don't hesitate to reach out to any of the dietitians or even the Unite for Her main member, and we'd be happy to get you those links. And off, you know, as always, we have that cook along option.
All right. So that looks, that looks good. And a few more ingredients. Here they are. Okay. So I will be adding some vegetable broth, just a half of a cup. And I have red pepper flakes. You don't have to put them in since it gives it a little bit of a heat. And I have some, uh, it calls for dried basil. I usually just use my Italian seasoning because it has a little bit of everything. Parsley, marjoram, oregano, uh, basil. So that's what I typically do. So I'll toss that in and add a little bit more or add some lemon juice. Give it a good stir. Um, reduce just a little bit. Any questions from anybody, anyone who is, who's cooking along, any questions? I am going to, while that simmers down a little bit, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can prepare for the next recipe, which will be using another alternative pasta. So I do hope you'll try, if you haven't already, um, an alternative pasta. You know, if you're expecting it to taste just like pasta, it doesn't all the time. I think all of them, depending on what it is, the pea, the lentil, uh, the chickpea, there's going to be a little bit of a different texture. My favorite is chickpea pasta. I feel like that is pretty close to the, the real thing. My husband is first generation, and sometimes he doesn't even realize that he's not eating a uh, wheat pasta. He thinks he's, you know, he's, he doesn't realize he's eating chickpea pasta until I tell him. Would I try to give it to my mother-in-law who's from Sicily? Probably not. She would probably call me out. <laughs> so I'll just save it for my husband who's just happy that, that he's, being, he's being fed. So let's see how this is doing. All right, that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is add the vegetables back in, add the pasta in, and then I'll plate it up so you can see it. And that the butter makes it, uh, just gives it nice, a nice scent also, it smells so good. And I don't know if anyone has ever seen, but I have not found it, is canned vegetable broth. I, there's only, to me, I can only, or not to me, but I only have found canned chicken broth or canned uh, beef, beef broth. So, you know, at that point, you have to buy the huge carton, it's four cups, and you're only using half a cup. So hopefully you'll find something else um, to do with your, with your broth. And of course, you can make your own vegetable broth as well. All right. So that is it. Again, something I chopped all of these vegetables last night. So again, another great make ahead, make ahead dish. Where's it on here? And 
little bit of Parmesan cheese. Again, you do not have to use it if you want to be um, completely plant-based. Of course, you'd have to leave the butter out as well if you want to be plant-based. So the options, again, would be to use olive oil and no cheese, or if you happen to uh, know of a dairy-free cheese that you could sprinkle on top. And there is our lighter pasta primavera. So beautiful colors as well. Feel free, I like the tomato idea, like slicing the, the grape or cherry tomatoes in half. So, all right, so that's recipe number two. Okay, last but not least, I am actually going to cook that, that pasta. While we talk, so hopefully whoever is cooking along is doing okay. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. How are you guys doing, Deborah and Debbie? Yeah, good, thumbs up. Debbie, yeah, okay, good, good. Yeah, you're, Michelle, you already had someone looking for food over there while you, you had Bella sniffing it's around. She, she knew it was ready. She knew one was ready. I'll give her some, some carrot. <laughs> That's her favorite. That's her favorite. Okay. Um, last but not least is our red pepper chickpea pasta. I'm only doing the one. I missed that. What was that? I'm only doing. Debbie's only doing the one that you haven't done yet. Okay. So okay. Debbie has it ready before you. <laughs> Great, great. All right, so my red uh, pepper chickpea pasta. So here I am using the chickpea pasta and my favorite brand of chickpea pasta is Bonza. However, a lot of pasta companies and store brands have jumped on the chickpea pasta uh, bandwagon. So it's very easy to find. This box is not hard to, to miss and the uh, ingredients, chickpeas. And there is a little bit, Target has canned vegetable broth. Thank you. I, on my fourth demo, right? <laughs> I wish I knew that the first time around. That's good, I'll keep that in mind when I make the recipe again, thank you. Um, so uh, chickpeas and a little bit of pea starch. So again, two ounces. So just like the, the last recipe, which was the regular pasta with all those different proteins. Um, two ounces has 10 grams of protein. So by far this has the most protein. So remember the first one had 14 grams of protein for four ounces. And then for two ounces, these had uh, 10 and 11. I re remembered all those numbers, but I didn't remember to send you the recipe. So it's hit or miss with my, with my memory. So. All right, so I'll be using a chickpea penne pasta. All right, very, very simple recipe. First ingredient, I have to make sure she's not behind me. First ingredient is uh, pasta sauce. So two cups, there was some spirited conversation in the chat, the last class about whether, you know, it's called pasta or gravy. So I make my own pasta sauce, which is all over me now. I make my own pasta sauce. Um, the, uh, I included my pasta sauce recipe along with the recipes that you'll receive. So it's like a bonus fourth recipe. And I, it, my, hus my first generation husband and my mother-in-law, I called it gravy growing up and they corrected me and said it's sauce or sugo because there's no, I didn't cook it with meat. So if you cook it with meat, then it's gravy. So that's, um, that's how I started the conversation and then spirited um, comments in the chat about that. So whichever, whichever way you go. Um, I do get asked a lot, how do you pick a jarred pasta sauce if you don't make your own? So the two things you're going to look for, added sugar and added sodium. So a serving, if whatever your serving is, so it's really important, obviously, to look at the food label and see if it's a half a cup or uh, three quarters of a cup. Every uh, serving should have 
130 milligrams or less of sodium. That is not a lot. That is not a lot at all. So if it goes a little bit above that, that's okay. If you're starting to see the four, five, 600 uh, grams of sodium, you might want to choose uh, something else. So I'm just gonna add my pasta. I'm not adding this whole box because um, you might just see me eating this afterwards. And it'll cook quicker. Also, so for added sugar, you want to stay around um, two grams of added sugar. Now you might see four grams of total sugar because there's sugar in tomatoes. You want to look at that number under it that says added sugar. Yes, the um, RAO sauce. I say RAO, but it might be like Rao or Rao, if anyone wants to come off mute and tell me how you say that. I was going to mention that brand because that is great. Um, ragu makes a simply ragu where very minimal ingredients, low sodium, low sugar. That's another good brand. So, you know, there's, I mean, there's like 20 feet of jarred sauces in your grocery store. So if you have time one day, just to start taking a look at some of those brands of jarred sauce and hopefully you'll find you'll find a good one. All right, so all that talk, I have my pasta sauce in here and I'm going to add roasted red peppers. So I buy them jarred, but you can make your own roasted red peppers. And how you do that is you take your whole red pepper, you massage it with some olive oil, put it on a baking sheet and broil it and you just keep turning it every few minutes, toss it in a paper bag, pull it out, and then the peel comes right off. So you can do that if you if you want to make your own. Like I said, I just use the jar. Next, I will be adding cashews. So cashews are what uh, is what will give it its creaminess. This is, it's unbelievable how these cashews give it that nice creamy flavor. So if you are doing a vegetarian meal, like a, a, a vegan mac and cheese, you are probably going to be using cashews to give it that creaminess. You need to use a high powered blender to completely pulverize this. If you do not have a high powered uh, blender or food processor, that's okay. What you would do is soak your cashews um, overnight or for a few hours, and that will get them nice and soft. So they will, um, they will completely puree. So I like this because it gives um, a nice velvety flavor, uh, or excuse me, a nice velvety texture. Can you see, can you use, yes. We talked about that um, on the last call. If you have a nut allergy, you can use a seed as well, or use a canned bean. Cannellini beans are great for any type of pureed food. So there is a recipe on our, um, on the website, again, that Kerr Library uh, Nutrition, there is a butternut squash recipe. So usually you're adding heavy cream to that. Add a can of cannellini beans, you will not taste the difference. It does not have a bean taste. Again, it just gives it that creaminess. Okay, so I have my, my cashews, um, red pepper flakes. Again, if you don't want to use the red pepper flakes, you don't have to. I have uh, two cloves of garlic. Told you about the, the other options and a half a cup of water. My blender is plugged in, which I usually forget to, to do during my cooking demos. All right, so I'm going to lose you for a minute while I turn this on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. And that is it. That is all you do. So obviously it's not warm. So you can pour it into a saucepan and warm it up before you add it to your, uh, add it to your pasta. Um, I wanted to mention too, I did, uh, while I was testing this recipe, I did it in my uh, food processor, which is not very powerful. And there were like uh, the chunks of, um, of cashews, which I mean, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's, again, it's just not the texture that you're going for. When you make this, if you find that it's too thick, um, then you can add more water. Or if you think that it's too thin, that's a little tougher because you might have to add another jar of, or not another jar, but some more red peppers, um, maybe more uh, cashews to, to thicken it up a little bit until you get to the consistency that, that you'd like. Okay, and my apologies, was it Debbie that was making the last recipe or Deborah? Debbie. Debbie was making it. She showed us a little bit earlier. Looks really good. Oh, good. Yeah, You're she's, done? she's showing us right now. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I'm, ma I'm making all three. So I'm flying around the kitchen. Sorry. <laughs> and Deborah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I hope it wasn't like that class that I was telling you about. I was like sweating at the end. Sweating it out at the end. All right, let me drain this. It's funny by class number four, I'm just whipping around. If you ever join number, class number one in the two month session, as Aaron would say, it's like the wild west. Like we're just like, not sure what we're doing and all over the place. So now it's like, I'm finishing early. So this is good, this is good. All right, so I know this is, you know, not very warm, but it has this beautiful orangey, nice color. It's nice and thick. And let me get another spoon. Of course, you can add um, Parmesan cheese to this as well, if you'd like. But it almost looks like a vodka sauce. And I, I, that's probably from the, from the cashews. There you go. Our red pepper chickpea pasta. What do you okay. think? Good. Are you gonna Are you gonna add some Parmesan to that? <laughs> I I probably will. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but I thought I put it on the last one. You know. Mm -hmm. But I I I love my Parmesan cheese. Yes. But like we always say, use cheese as a condiment. So. I don't do that. I got that from Aaron and I was like, okay. <laughs> but no, from a heart health standpoint, that's why we why we say we do have to watch our saturated fats. Um, all right. So that is it. Let me bring everything back out. Now I have the little baby uh, kitten coming over here. I don't know what he thinks he's going to get, but... Um, all right, so here we go. Again, the chopped salad pasta, any lighter pasta primavera, and the red pepper chickpea pasta. There we go. Any questions about the recipes? Um, if you, I don't know if, if you, you, did you reply to one on um, if, if the cashews can be replaced for cashew butter? Yeah, cashew butter, um, uh, any type of seeds, if there's a nut allergy, uh, canned beans to give it that, that creaminess. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> um, yeah, those would be the, the substitutions. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the class. If you are new to our cooking demos, 
I hope you did you use uh, raw. Uh, I used raw, but roasted would be fine too, just to give it um, a nice smoky flavor. Uh, maybe get a no sodium or low sodium cashew so you're not adding extra salt to it. Um, but yeah, good question. So I hope you enjoyed the cooking demos. We would love for you to join um, us for other cooking demos, the other, other dietitians. Uh, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Volpe. Um, hope you are able to join other cooking demos. We really enjoy these. Once you get the recipes, please, please, if you have any questions, even if it's after hours, you know, send a, send a text. If you have a question about one of the ingredients, if you're shopping or if you're cooking, um, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to help.